Hey everybody, this is Sam from Butterscotch Shenanigans again, and today we're going to be making the Escape Pod, which bears the character in our new game, uh, down to the planet before the action gets started. And I um, just want to talk through the process here and show you guys again uh, how simple it is to do stuff like this in Inkscape, uh, if you kind of take your time with it. This is the first piece I've done that's not pulling directly from some sort of other reference, so um, you just thought of the shape of an escape pod, <clears throat> use his little dead body there on the side to uh, make sure he would technically fit in it, if we want to be accurate, and uh, just kind of went away with that based on the Art Deco style that I had accidentally made for the keystone, which is that object on the left there. <clears throat> So here again you're seeing lots of uh, duplication and addition, so that's how I just created that symmetrical door there. And then I'm taking the colors off of the keystone because I don't remember what they are. Uh, making them full opacity so I can go ahead and make those 30 or 40 opacity changes. Starting to work in some of the highlights and, and uh, shadows of the piece after getting the basic shape kind of figured out. Now what I found is actually <clears throat> I tend to do things in about uh, three three stages. So the first one is kind of the major, all the major shapes. The second one is the minor shapes within those, which would be something like the door or the the uh, line work on the bottom and top, and then the third stage is shadows and highlights, and the last stage is uh, detail line work. So. And here you can use the alignment tool to uh, fix up nodes to make sure that the nodes themselves are in line, which is what I did on that door. And at this point I decided that the top things that were pieces of metal need to be an edge. We're going to go ahead and change them to blue and then add a bunch of uh, kind of engine work on the outside of them. And the bottom piece there is meant to, again, kind of reflect the same style as that uh, keystone in terms of its line usage and stuff. It's important to note that I generally have no idea uh, what's going on. I tend to make stuff tends to be a little bit better if I can manage to uh, just completely zone in and forget about the fact that I've only been doing this for a very short period of time and don't really know what's happening. So we're duplicating the door piece in order to get a kind of a um, embossed feel in the moment here. And here come those tiny lines I was talking about that kind of add that uh, the dirtiness that apparently is the, the kind of style flavor that I have. And those are all just kind of, if you look at the direction they're going in, they're usually congruent with what you might think the 3D shape of the thing would be. And I group, group them up for later use so I don't have to worry about uh, Clicking on them one at a time, or actually grabbing just one and moving it somewhere. And here comes that door. Highlights and lowlights. I decided to make them a little bit, a little bit brighter to give it a very shiny sort of metal feeling on there. Um, and yeah, you could suggest that you know, the door itself should probably be flat. Wouldn't make much sense for the door to have all kinds of weird bumps on it. But um, stylistically, it fits with the other stuff I do since I don't generally follow those rules. Um, and also, I think it makes it a little more fun. It's got some jagged edges to it. 
grab the glues. Good. 